Let's just cover a couple of key points here regarding rendering in Next.js, static versus dynamic. And if you see another dog in the background at a certain point here, that's not my German Shepherd that you typically see. Um, I didn't get another dog. I'm just watching a dog for a friend. Well, actually a girlfriend, but we don't need to get into that right now. So with that, in Next.js, you can render things statically and dynamically. So in a static route, components are rendered on the server at build time. The result of this work can be cached and then served to the user on subsequent requests. So when you compile and build your application, you can render these static routes or static route segments at build time. And then since they are static, they are not dynamically changing data and not dynamically changing routes then you can just use this kind of rendered data over and over again, and then maybe leave that data on a cache to serve to your clients when they need it. So static routes, they're non-changing data, and they are rendered on the server at build time. But with that dynamic route, which it talks about here, components are rendered on the server at request time. So every time you make a request to a certain route, your server will then render those components at request time and then will serve those to your client. So static is rendering things at build time. Dynamic is rendering things at request time. Static rendering is what is done by default in which Next.js statically renders routes to improve performance. This means all the rendering work is done ahead of time and can be served from a CDN which is geographically closer to the user, which can decrease latency or how long it takes the user to kind of see your code, so to speak. And you can improve like certain core web vitals and stuff like that by statically rendering things and then serving things from a CDN. Now, also by default in Next.js, it will cache the result of fetch requests unless they specifically opt out of the fetch request by setting a cache option. And then also with fetch requests, in the route, if they use the revalidate option, the route will be re-rendered statically during revalidation. So you can set like a fetch request to revalidate every 60 seconds or something. And when it re-renders that during revalidation, it's gonna do so statically. And then we also have dynamic rendering. So during static rendering, if a dynamic function or a dynamic fetch request is discovered, Next.js will switch to dynamically rendering the whole route at request time. Any cache data request can still be reused during dynamic rendering. So if you have a dynamic function or a dynamic fetch request within one of your routes, then it's going to change that entire route, the whole route here, to being dynamically rendered at request time rather than build time. And then it says here, note how dynamic functions always opt the route into dynamic rendering, regardless of whether the data fetching is cached or not. In other words, Static rendering is dependent not only on the data fetching behavior, but also on the dynamic functions used in the route. So you have to kind of pay attention to this a little bit in which it's not only dependent on data fetching behavior, but also if you're using dynamic functions within a route. And for your dynamic functions here, dynamic functions rely on information that can only be known at request time. So if you're using a function within your server components that is using cookies or it's using headers or it's using search params or the search params pages prop all of those are going to change that into a dynamic function which will opt that entire route into be dynamically rendered at request time now it also says here that they recommend wrapping client components that use the use search params hook in a suspense boundary which will effectively create its own separate chunk for that component in which this will allow any client components above it in the hierarchy to be statically rendered. So if you're going to use these use search frames, it might be good to make this a leaf component or a component that is kind of at the leaf end of your React tree-like hierarchy. And then all components above it in your kind of React tree, all parent components, those can still be statically rendered, which can help improve performance that way. And then one thing that's kind of good to know here is that Next.js will introduce hybrid server-side rendering where layouts and pages in a route can be independently statically or dynamically rendered. 
instead of the whole route. So it seems like they're kind of working on this behavior of not having to opt in an entire route into dynamic rendering if you're just using a dynamic function, but that is still not available yet. But I think the the team over at Next.js and Vercel is really good and they'll probably follow through with that for sure. So this also says here, dynamic data fetches are fetch requests that specifically opt out a caching behavior like we discussed earlier. So if they set the cache option to no store, or if you set the revalidate to zero, all right? So if you use dynamic data fetching, or if you use dynamic functions, which are functions that just rely on information like cookies, headers, search params, functions that can only know their information at request time, that's going to opt that entire route that has these functions or these requests into being dynamically rendered, meaning they are rendered at request time. But if you don't use any of that, then by default, Next.js is going to statically render that content, meaning it's going to render it at build time and you can use a CDN and cache that and do some performance improvements there. So just wanted to touch on some things regarding static and dynamic rendering there. But now in future videos, I'm going to cover more kind of specifics regarding data fetching and caching and rendering and different things like that. So thanks for checking this out and I'll see you in that next one.